Hey everyone, it's your host Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And today I have a true professional coming to the stage here. We are going to talk about divorce. But this gentleman is actually many things. He's a, and one of the things we're going to talk about is his new book, Divorce Decision Decoding. He actually wrote the book to help women find the key things so that they don't stay in a relationship in a marriage longer than they have to. You won't want to miss one second of what he has to share. Stay tuned. Stay with us. Here we go. Hey everyone, I have come into the stage this incredible gentleman, Mr. Mike Fink. He's an author, coach, inventor, and a revolutionary, clarity revolutionary, and decision-making processing expert. And he wrote the book called, the, and worked on the book called Decoding the Grid. And he, what he does is he teaches us, shows us how to take very complex things and break them down into their simplest forms so that we can make the best decisions in our lives. With a large number of variables to consider, right? We live in an age of information. And sometimes those things can be overwhelming and they can come at a really high cost of failure, a high failure rate, because we're trying to take in information, so much information and process it at a smooth, delicate way. And sometimes we don't end up at the right final destination. And so this gentleman here wrote the book on divorce. And so it's called Divorce Decision Decoding. And this man we have come into the stage is actually going to dive deep with us and help us get some understanding as to his incredible mind. So help me welcome to the stage, the incredible Mr. Mike Fink. Hi, Marcus. Hey. Great meeting. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. Thank you for spending time with us on the Gentleman Style Podcast stage. This is unique, sir. What you are doing is absolutely unique and absolutely impressive. And that's why I sought you out, because usually it's one side where, you know, the men are talking to men and women are talking to women. But you are my second interview <laughs> where an author wrote about the opposite sex. So I had to have you on. So thank you for making time for us today. Well, it's my true pleasure to be here, right? So I guess you refer to the fact that I focus on helping women considering divorce who are afraid of making a mistake they will regret, get clarity and certainty, and actually do that in 30 days or less or you know, through the specific things that I teach in the book that I share in the book. And this is what got your curiosity, right? Why a man working with women? Definitely. So that's a great question. And if I may take a step back, I, I, it comes back from my origin story because, you know, there's a saying that your wounds are your gift. And the process that I write about in the book is really the uh, result of 20 years of two decades of expertise and of five years of misery. And basically, I was in a 10 year long relationship. It was a business relationship, a 50 50 business, 50 uh, 50 business relationship with a gentleman. And the first five years were okay, but the last five years were terrible because the market was changing. We started having to make some other decisions. And this is when it became very, very clear that we had different values. We had different visions. Our visions were colliding in terms of how to serve our customers, where we wanted to, to go, what we wanted to do. And what was an okay relationship became a nightmare relationship. We're arguing and fighting all the time, screaming, screaming in front of employees, and it became really bad. But what hit me, Marcus, was it wasn't just that I was in a relationship where I was unhappy or that wasn't working. The real issue that I was facing was the issue of indecision. What do I do about it? You know, is he right? Am I wrong? Is it me? Is it the relationship? Even if I'm right and he's wrong, well, what do I do? Do I end the relationship? Well, it means I will have to start from scratch. What if I cannot make it by myself? I had all those thoughts, all those fears, all this indecision. And that's when I realized how much of a toll it can take on your daily life, on your mental focus, on your emotions, on your health, on your relationships, on the way you are present or not with other people, because there's always this wheel churning in the background in terms of should I stay, should I go? Does that make sense so far, Marcus? 
It absolutely makes sense. And that makes perfect sense. I'm curious as to what changed. Were, was the business relationship that you and the gentleman had, what changed and what caused the first change when you did that introspection and that deep dive to figure out and decode um, what went wrong? Was it you guys were making too much money? I, I find that people make too much money. And when money is involved, sometimes, okay, what do we do with that money? Do we put it in marketing? Do we go on vacation? You know, you may have one partner who's very business oriented and then you have another partner that's like, no, I, I only started this company so I can spend my days in Dubai and Maui sipping drinks and pina coladas. When you have another person that's like, no, we need to invest back all this money back into the business. So what happened? What was significant? Do you know? Yeah, that's such a great question. And I think that in a way you kind of answered it by asking it what was really the, the, the clincher or the real trigger was that the difference in values became apparent. When things were working fine the first five years, you know, when there's abundance, everything works fine. But when you need to start making decisions, when there were the, the, the decisions can have an actual impact on money or expenses where things are less abundant and there's more um, scarcity, that's when things become tougher to discuss where there's more friction, especially if the values are different. So in this case, and by the way, it's not that I was right and he was wrong. It's just that we had a different set of values, a different way of thinking about how we wanted to serve our customers, what we thought was important, how we wanted to express our skills. And, and at some point it became obvious that he had a completely different vision in mind. And this can be true, whether it's in a business relationship or a couple, you know, at some point, you may be hitting different life stages, and this is where you start seeing that. Oh, okay. I thought you would be, uh, we would be going this way, but we're going that way. So it was really that different in terms of what do we do now because we have to make things differently from before, and that's when the differences became apparent. But what really triggered the, the like the let's say epiphany that led me to create the decoding grid, which is this process that I have created to really make this complex high cost of failure decision was after five years of constantly arguing of not knowing what to do i finally came to have my 50th birthday and that's when i did a life review and i looked at all the decisions that i had made in my life and i was like hmm, you know i got most of them right at, le at least the big ones and i realized that i had applied a specific process that i had developed in my two decades of expert in personal development and for some reason marcus I had not applied it in making the decision to become involved in this business partnership. And I realized, oh my goodness, now I get it. I didn't have, I didn't take the chance to become per perfectly clear on what I wanted out of this relationship beforehand. So no wonder, you know, if you have an, an unclear intent, you will have an unwanted result. And when I had that, I decided to apply my medicine and to apply the process. And that's when I went from being confused, burned out, anxious to oh, now i know i finally aligned my head with my heart with my gut and i just had that level of clarity that gave me certainty and in my case it was i am better off leaving because our relationship will never be able to work and i knew exactly why i didn't only feel it with my emotions but i also could explain it logically that's this alignment that i'm talking about and I decided to end the relationship. Now, it wasn't easy. I had to sell an asset to buy him out. There were the negotiations and so on. But once I had that level of calm, of certainty, of uh, alignment, I was able to move forward in a very different way. And this prompted me to say, you know, maybe I am onto something here because if I had not lived it myself in terms of the pain of indecision that can affect so many areas of your life, I would have not understood how debilitating it can be. And I always say that indecision is like chronic pain. This is a good soundbite, by the way. You know, some days are worse, some days are better, but overall your quality of life is miserable and it gets worse over time. And mm -hmm. the universe works in some funny ways. At that time, my spouse's brother was a medical a student. He had to make some decisions about his career. And he had been stuck in anxiety and confusions for two long years to the point that he was having nausea and anxiety thinking about it. And I led him through my process. And in two hours, I took him from confusion and, and anxiety to clarity and certainty and calm. 
And he told me it was as if I had been in a pitch dark room and you just, you know, I was bumping against furniture, but you just flipped the, so the light switch on and now I can see. Yeah. That was the turning point. I decided to change my life and then to decide, okay, who am I going to help with this process? And to answer the question about why I decided to work with men, with women, I realized that one of the most difficult decisions we can ever make in our life is divorce. Why? Because it's so complex. There are so many things to consider. And the cost of getting it wrong is so high. If you get it wrong, you may regret it for years to come, even for the rest of your life. So then was, okay, who do I work with, men or women? And the reality is that in the United States, at least, 69% of divorces are initiated by women. So they are much more likely to be the one considering divorce and being stuck in indecision. And also I found that women, again, in North America, are much more open or likely to be seeking for help to make this life-altering decision. Does that make sense, Marcus? That absolutely does. And I thank you for breaking it down in such a delicate way. And so you do something, I and you put this in your book, you put the decision-making in the front. I think oftentimes, just like the business, it started off a certain way, but we didn't we didn't take certain things into consideration. You can't change people, right? You can't change people. You can't change. Um, you can only change yourself. And so when I used to date, I, I, I learned that I need to ask the hard questions early and I need to ask the tough questions. And you break this down as you de you help people decode this a part of their lives. The things that we waited on and, and said this wasn't important, we need to put that up front. And firstly, and get very direct when it comes to, like you said, a very important decision when it comes to marriage. And so I find it very helpful. Why aren't people doing this? Why in the business you realize that your partner was actually this way and not that way? Is it because we didn't, we, me, I'm speaking to me, I didn't ask the right questions in, in the beginning. What's, what's causing that, that, that problem? There are several causes, most likely. You know, I don't think there's a universal answer for that. But I think that sure. the big ones is that, first of all, nobody has taught us how to get clarity in terms of our relationships. Even in terms of our own emotions, quite often we feel one way, but we're not sure why we feel this way. So if we're not clear about what, what, what we feel and why we feel it, then already this is kind of, a, of an obstacle. Another thing is that, we don't know exactly how to make sense and we don't trust ourselves enough to understand, you know, these are my needs. What I feel is what I feel and it's not right. It's wrong. It's not wrong. It's what it is. And we let ourselves be influenced by society, by expectation. And uh, we think that, oh, maybe society or the culture is right and I'm wrong. But the reality is that we are individuals. We are human beings and we each have things that are important to us and that matter to us. And the first step in getting clarity is acknowledging that, okay, what I feel is what I feel, and then starting shedding some light. Um, does that make sense? I, I, I know it's not a full answer because the reality is that some people yeah. may not consider it for some, re some of these reasons. It, it can be multifactorial if I, or multifaceted. But the big answer is we don't know ourselves really well and we have never been taught or never took the time to really go through and think deep in terms of why we do what we do and what the repercussions may be. Does it make sense? Makes absolute sense. Thank you for breaking that down. This is Dr. Mike Fink. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Fink, I, I enjoy this conversation. I enjoy talking about relationships and marriages. Um, the, the divorce rate, like you said, is accurate with the high women are the ones that typically initiate it. And so what, how do we get back to baseline? You discuss the, your method. Can you share three steps for gaining absolute clarity in divorce decision making that you share and help women with? Oh, you got me started here, Marcus, because I'm really, really passionate about my subject. So I'm going to share the three steps to make that happen. And first, there's one important piece of information that people need to understand. When it comes to high stakes decisions, such as divorce, the reality is that most people, in this case, let's say women who are considering divorce, think that they are free to make the decision. 
But the reality, and this is true, by the way, for anyone, whether if you, even if you're a man considering quitting your job, but you know that if you get it wrong, the consequences could be very costly. We think that we are at liberty to make that decision. But the story is a little bit different because there's a mechanism. Our biology is actually programmed to keep us stuck in the status quo. So I have here a mock-up of the brain. So, you know, for people who are listening or who will be listening to the podcast, just imagine that the brain is like an ice cream cone that has three scoops of ice cream, one on top of the other, and each one is bigger. And at the very bottom is, at the base of the brain, we have what is called the old brain, the reptilian brain, the primal brain. You probably have heard this expression. And this part of the brain is in charge of our survival. The second scoop, the second layer is the emotional brain. And the last one is the rational brain, the one in charge of logic, of emotions, and so on. And I'll talk about that more in a moment. But the reason I'm bringing this up, Marcus, is that our primal brain, the one at the bottom, the reptilian brain, is in charge of our survival. And whenever you are facing a decision where the costs of getting it wrong are so high, because let's face it, divorce, if you get it wrong, it affects not only you, but also people around you, your children, your family, maybe your friends. It affects you on all fronts, emotional, psychological, personal, professional, financial. It affects you for years to come or even for the rest of your life. And you don't have the benefit of trial and error. Once you make that decision, it's pretty much irreversible. So, once you are confronting such a difficult decision, your primal brain, the one in charge of your survival, says, hey, 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 hold your horses. When in doubt, wait it out because my job is to keep you safe. And I know that even though you may be miserable right now in your relationship, at least I know you have been able to survive. It may suck, part of my French, but the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. And mm -hmm. as long as you don't make a decision, let's say to divorce, you don't have to face any consequence. You cannot be blamed by your kids. You cannot be blamed by yourself. You cannot. You don't have to face the consequences and then possibly um, come to the conclusion that maybe it was a mistake. As long as you keep telling yourself, you know, I still need to think about it. Technically speaking, you're off the hook. And that's why people spend years, sometimes decades in indecision because what you need is to have certainty that it is the right decision. Otherwise, biology and your brain keep you stuck because its job is to protect you. And as far as your brain knows, what the situation where you are in is safer the, the, than the unknown. Does that make sense, Marcus? That absolutely makes sense. So the first step I need to do is override my survival brain. Is that... That's you know, that's a very smart comment. It's actually part of the steps. It's not the first one, but the first thing is that you need to understand that you need to override that survival mechanism. So you got that absolutely right. So the next question is, okay, how do I override this survival mechanism? And the antidote to indecision is certainty. And a lot of people, whether it's men or women, but uh, let's say women in this case, are stuck in indecision because they don't have the certainty that leaving may be the right decision, or they don't have the certainty that, you know, maybe there's still a chance that I could save my relationship. And having said that, there are some women, there are some people who something happens in their relationship, they decide to divorce right away and they never regret it, right? I mean, you've heard about some people, they yep. may not be the majority, but those people exist, right? Right, they do, they do. Yeah, so what is different about them? Well, it is because most likely in those situations, something that I call an instant deal breaker happened, meaning something that is completely unacceptable for them. For some women, for some women it may be their spouse uh, cheating. Maybe it is something different. Maybe it is, oh, my spouse stole the money that we're putting aside to send the kids to college and he saw, lost it you know, at the casino. And in that case, that's completely unacceptable. Or maybe their spouse did drugs or became physically abusive. Something happened that was clearly completely unacceptable. And in that case, because it was what I call an instant deal breaker, when you have an instant deal breaker, you have the certainty that staying in your relationship would be more, quote unquote, dangerous than leaving. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. What is, that does. 
Yeah. Ooh, this is good. So, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> so this happens just in a few cases because otherwise, you know, in fact, I have a lot of women, a lot of clients who tell me, you know, Mike, I wish that my husband was a jerk. And you may think, why are they saying this? But what they are really saying, Marcus, is I wish he was such a terrible person that I would be certain that I cannot stay with that person anymore. But that's not the case. Usually the relationship may not be working, but it's not that terrible. They are not in a relationship with a monster. So how do you get certainty? And the first step, and this is where I'm going to give you the three steps, is to first gather all the pieces of the puzzle. I mean, think about it. If you have a jigsaw puzzle that has a thousand pieces and yet you have only 200 pieces in your hands, how likely are you going to be to solve the puzzle? Very unlikely. Absolutely. I need, I need everything unlikely. to finish. Yeah. So uh, I love your, your visuals. You are just the king on that. Wonderful. And I remember I had this client, Felicia. She had been married for eight years and she found that her, that her husband had been cheating on her several times and he had made amendments. He went to attend a support group for sex addiction to supposedly get, supposedly get better. But she was devastated. But he was such an amazing dad. So mm-hmm. she knew that she wanted to have a spouse who would be faithful, loyal, but also a good dad. But in this case, there was a conflict. And she was not considering all the pieces of the puzzle. She was going, I can't do this anymore. But he's such an amazing dad. Bing, bong, bing, bong. She was flipping back and forth. And if you think about a relationship, if you think about your ideal spouse, the reality is if you start making a list of things that are important to you, maybe you want somebody that you can trust. Maybe you want somebody who has a great sense of humor. Maybe you want somebody who likes to travel. Maybe you want somebody who's physically affectionate. Whatever is important to you, when you really take the time to look deep, it comes down that most people have between 20 to 30 things that they value in their ideal partner in a relationship. And I can see that, wow, that sounds like a lot, right? And for most people, it sounds like a lot. And that's a sure sign that they're missing important pieces of the puzzle. So step number one, it may sound obvious, but let's make sure we have all the relevant pieces. Does that make sense? That does. Perfect. So gather evidence that they cheated. Well, in that case, it's a different kind of thing that I would invite people to gather is to get, first of all, let's understand the things that are important to you. Let me give you an example. It may be an example. Actually, I think it works for everybody. Let's say that you are in the market to buy a car and the dealer shows you different cars. How do you know which car to choose, Marcus? Based off of my likes, uh, what I, what the types of things I've seen in other cars and mm-hmm. then, you know, put those things together to combine and make my my perfect vehicle. So, so it has to have high gas mileage, you know, low maintenance, my favorite color, sunroof, and I just create a list, gather the pieces. Perfect. So that's what I mean by gather the pieces. Gather all the things that are important to you for that specific context. So in the case of a relationship is gathering and writing down all the things that you value in your ideal spouse or partner, right? Maybe you want somebody who... Um, Likes music, so you can go to uh, concerts with that person. Or maybe once you like somebody who stays at home and reads because you're bookworm, whatever that is. There's no right, there's no wrong. It's only what is important to you. But the first step is to become aware of all the things that are important to you. Because if you didn't know that you want high mileage and sunroof and so on, you wouldn't be able to choose a car, right? True. So you need to have clarity. And that clarity, once you have that list of 20 to 30 pieces, is really defining what does it mean exactly? What does it mean to me when I say that I want a partner who's physically affectionate? And you want to be as specific as possible. Maybe you write down, you know, we kiss every morning when we wake up. When we walk in the street, we hold hands. When we watch a movie on Netflix, we're hugging each other. Be as specific as possible as if you were making a movie so that you or any third party would know without the shred of a doubt, whether this thing that is important to you is being fulfilled or not. Does that make sense? It does. Okay, perfect. So this is step number one, and you can see that, and I'm going to say that for your listeners, I have two Ruby cubes in my hand, right? And one is completely jumbled, and the other one is perfectly solved. All the colors are aligned. Now, the interesting thing, Marcus, is that if you look at those two cubes, and this is a question for you, 
Look at the jumbled cube. Are any pieces missing compared to the cube that is being solved? Are any color stickers or are there any smaller cubes missing compared to the cube that is being solved? No. No, they're all there, right? right? The only difference between those two cubes is that the pieces on the solved cube are being put in the proper sequence. And this is what I have discovered is that there's a proper sequence to take all the pieces of the puzzle, all the things that are important to us, and when you arrange them in the proper sequence, you end up with the solved cube. The reality is that we already have within ourselves all the necessary elements to make the proper decision. We need to become aware of them and then put in the proper order. So how do we put them in the proper order? Yes. The first thing is to rank the values that are important to us from the most important one to the least important one. And then, and this is a hard part because whenever you deal with 20 to 30 things, most people get kind of lost, but I have created a very st specific step-by-step -step process that I talk about in my book, Divorce Decision Decoded. But the first step is to really understand, okay, what's more important versus less important? What's essential versus optional? And this is why this is so important, Marcus. Let's say that you are looking for your dream house and there are 20 things that you're looking for in your dream house. And one day, a friend of yours comes and says, hey, Marcus, I have found your dream house. He has 19 out of the 20 things that you are looking for. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's 95%, 95% of the things that you are looking for. Is that a good thing or a bad thing, Marcus? That it could be. <laughs> it could be. I may be able to make an exception. It, it just depends. But it's not the complete list. You are so smart. That's exactly the right answer. The answer is it depends because if the one thing missing is, oh, you know, I wanted to have some extra storage space, but it doesn't have it. Well, who cares? But if the one thing missing is it's in a different city and state from where you want to live, everything else becomes a moot point, right? Right. That's so true. I know this is kind of an extreme example, but I have this saying, and that's not a quotable soundbite values are not an equal vote democracy. They are a military hierarchy. And by that, I mean, it doesn't matter how many things are being fulfilled in the relationship. What matters is which ones. Mm. Same way that if you have 20 things that are important in your house, well, you could have 19 out of 20. If the number one, if numero uno is missing, everything else becomes a moot point. Mm. So... Okay. Once you have that order, you really also need to understand what is essential versus optional, because otherwise you don't know what you can and cannot compromise on in your relationship. And this is why I also say that people who go to do marriage counseling without having absolute clarity first, it's like putting the cart before the horse. Because if you don't know what you should be working on in terms of hopefully finding a way to better communicate or to have specific changes happen, then you may be working on the wrong things. Imagine that you go to marriage counseling and you work on something that, you know what, my husband made changes on this, but turns out that was something that was optional to me. Now you have made the situation worse because your husband has put time and effort. He has demonstrated he was willing to make changes, but it wasn't on a needle mover. And now, if you still feel bad and consider divorcing, you feel even more guilt because he made changes. Does that make sense? Yeah, he made improvements to the thing that you didn't realize was low on the totem pole. Exactly. So I'm going to give you two actual client stories. The first one is this woman. Her name was Kate. And Kate had 22 things that were important to her in her relationship. 17 were essential. And when I guided her to... With everything in order, it came out that, you know, just in terms of the number of values, her husband fulfilled 70% of the things that were important to her. And you could think, wow, that sounds pretty good. Not bad at all. The problem, though, and this is why I, am, I, I said earlier that it's not an equal vote democracy, but a military hierarchy, is that out of her essentials, four out of her top five were not being fulfilled. Only seven values out of 22 were missing, but unfortunately, most of them were in the most important ones. And when Kate had that clarity, she realized, wow, okay, now I understand. Now I can put into words 
why I have felt so miserable because my husband is not a bad person, but it's just that the things that matter most to me are not fulfilled. And quite frankly, if I were expecting for him to make changes on those four things plus the other three that are essential to me, that's not reasonable. It would, I would be asking too much of him to change because he would need what I call a personality transplant. If he made seven significant changes, he would not be the same person anymore. So that gave her the clarity to understand, you know what? I need to move on. And she was able to do that with peace of mind. Does that make sense, Marcus? It does. Do you believe do you believe people can influence someone to change or do do you recommend a client hey go home make the list find the puzzle pieces that are important to you categorize them by significance and then go tell do you share this list with your partner or no keep it to that, yourself That that's a really good uh question actually and I think it's important well it all depends on what the answer that reveals itself to you is. Because this process is not just so that you have the confirmation that you should divorce, because this process could also tell you that you can actually salvage your marriage. And it also tells you what to focus on to make that happen. So I'm going to answer your question in just a moment. And I'm, I'm going to make a small detour to illustrate one way where the relationship was salvageable. Okay. So... I had this client where uh, she kept complaining. She knew she was unhappy in the relationship. And one of the things that rubbed her was that her husband was messy. He would leave, leave the, the, dish, the dirty dishes into the sink for three days. He would just drop the dirty clothes on the floor, not put them in the laundry bag. I mean, for her, it was a nightmare. And she kept nagging him. And it was, <laughs> it was something that really bothered her. But... When I guided her through the process, when we made the list of all the things, that's why it's important to have all the pieces that were important to her, from the most important to the least important, it turned out that having a person, a spouse that was tidy was number 21 out of 22. It was the second to last. So not only it was not the most important one, it was completely optional. And for her, it was a huge aha moment because she realized that before, when she didn't have the clarity, she knew that some things were not going on, uh, not going well in her relationship, but we're not very good unless you take those steps to, to, to have more clarity at understanding our emotions. So she felt negative emotions, and what she did is look around and try to understand why she felt that way. And the most obvious cues were the dirty dishes and the clothes on the floor, right? Mm -hmm. So she's, ah, okay, it's because he's messy. That's what is a problem in our relationship. But she realized there were other things that she could work on. So once she realized that, she was actually able to salvage the relationship because then it turned out in her list that, yes, he was not perfect, but there were only three things that were essential to her that were not being fulfilled. And she realized that her husband could make could make some significant changes on two of them and one she could kind of find a, a workaround. And I'm going to give you kind of a, a tip here because, and now I'm going to answer a question. Can you have other people change? Should you, should you ask them to change? Can you influence them to change? Well, at the end of the day is if you are in a relationship, I believe communication is important. And the more clarity you have for yourself in terms of what you want, what is important to you, the better you are in terms of communicating what is important to you. Because it would be a shame to have something important to you that is not being fulfilled, not talk about it, and then end the relationship. When in reality, maybe that is something that your husband can and is willing to make efforts on, right? So you don't know until you have that clarity. And then obviously, just because technically speaking, a person can change, it doesn't mean that they will change, but it is a possibility. But I'll give you a, a workaround because when I work with clients, first of all, we assess all the required changes in terms of the essential areas, what needs to be changed for them to be sufficiently happy long term. And you want to whittle down the number of changes as much as possible because change is hard in general. And you want to ask the least possible amount of effort for changing in your spouse, right? right? Because, you know, how many people do you know, Marcus, who has made, who have made one significant long-term change in their lives, either quitting smoking, losing weight permanently, you know, quitting drinking, tr quitting drinking. How many people do you know? I, not many, not, not many. many, but they exist, right? They do exist. Yes. Okay. But it's already, the answer is not many. So 
how many people do you know who have made two significant long-term changes? Even less. Yeah. What about three significant long-term changes? Never heard of them. So there you go. So that's what I'm saying. Change is hard. So before asking another person or before even exploring the possibility for them to change, you want to have a laser focus on exactly what needs to change and whether you those things need to come from your spouse or not. So let me give you a strategy that I share in my book in terms of when you whittle down the required changes, which I call outsourcing. So I had this client. Her name was um, Stacy, and she was a storyteller. Boy, she loved coming home and telling her husband about her day and all the little details about what happened at work and so on. There was just one little problem, Marcus. Guess what? Her husband had ADHD. <laughs> mm. He was not a good listener. So you can imagine that it was a huge point of friction in their relationship. She felt always so frustrated because she wanted to share everything with him. And it's not because he was a bad person, but he just couldn't focus long enough. So when she became very, very clear in terms of that, we explored possible strategies and I call that outsourcing. And what she did is she scheduled two or three lunches a week with some very good friends of hers who were phenomenal listeners. And she would go and meet them and share everything with them. And then when she would cut home, she would have her quote unquote listening need cup filled enough so that she wouldn't need her husband to listen to her. Now, ideally, she would have loved her husband to be the one to listen to her. But if it meant that she could save her relationship by quote unquote having this need fulfilled somehow else, then she was willing to do that. Does that make sense? That makes sense. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Mr. Fink, y'all, Dr. Fink in the building, spilling the proverbial tea. Uh, we have one quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Stay with us. We'll be right, right back. Support for Gentleman Style Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers you precision engineering tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you 20% off free worldwide shipping with the code GENSTYLE at manscaped.com. Baby Gear Services DMV specializes in high quality baby gear rentals in the Maryland and DC metro area. We have a wide range of baby gear items for rent, including wooden cribs, car seats, high chairs, and more. We also offer seasonal specials and free delivery. Our prices are very versatile to cover every budget. Wooden cribs start at $17 a day, high chairs and even car seats start at $5 a day. Check out our website, www.bgsdmv.com. We are back to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And we have the incredible, I call it him doctor this episode, Dr. Mike Fink, spilling the tea and helping us decode divorce and helping our female audience. And, and even this is insightful for men. Right. Because this gives insight and perspective on decoding ourselves. Right. Um, because I could see that helping me in a relationship um, is finding out what are some things, what are the tools that are what are the things that are valuable to me? What are those 20 things? And then realizing, you know, before I jump off the ledge and make a mistake that I actually have a great person by my side. And the thing that may be bugging me because it's out my face, like dishes and trash and leaving the seat door. Seat, seat um, up or down, that's not really important. Whereas the top five things, they're hitting the marks on. And, and, and so, like you said, it's not just divorce, even though that's a, a trigger word and a buzzword. Um, it's also things that can help you decode and figure out, listen, you actually have a quality marriage. You, have a, you actually have a quality relationship. And to find perfect is probably not out there. Right. And you when you gave the example earlier in the interview about the young lady who stayed with her husband, I met a, a similar woman um, years ago 
that was in the same situation. She was married to this man. Um, they were both obese when they got married. They both had surgery. And well, she, no, she had surgery. She had the gastro surgery, lost a massive ton of weight. He did not. And so when she got the surgery, she started, you know, fitting in outfits that she couldn't wear before. And she really became very confident in her sexuality and her femininity. And so her husband continued to look the same way. And so sh she cheated openly um, with other men and other partners because she wasn't being fulfilled sexually because her partner was libido and he was bigger. So it was just it was not a good fit. And she actually discovered that she likes masculine, like strong men, muscular men. And, but and so I said to her, why don't you just leave? Why don't you end the marriage? Why don't you end the whole thing? Because you're clearly not happy. And it was the same thing. He's a great father. She had, they have three kids together. He's a great father. He she she's also the breadwinner. So she makes the majority of the money for the household. Um, but he's always helping all three of their kids with their homework. He's at every baseball practice. He's at every dance recital. He's he's up making breakfast, lunch, dinner. He's cooking. Um, and so he's a great father and she doesn't want to do all the things that he enjoys doing by herself. And so she stays with him. And so that's a that's a unique decoding. I didn't understand it or not until you just explained it. She decoded her marriage and she's able to go outside of her marriage and get the sexual fulfillment. But she realizes that it's not. It's not significant enough to leave. And so we, we, I, I I can't imagine what would you say to that client? What would what would what sticks out to you um, there? Because that was unique to me. Well, in, in a way, if you think about it, you kind of uh, gave another example of outsourcing, right? I mean, it yeah. is an extreme example, right? Because usually physical intimacy is the one thing that unless you are in an open relationship or open about sexuality, that's not something that you would be willing to have your partner outsource. But that's the perfect example. She realized that this was a need that was important to her. And she somehow outsourced it in a way. And from what you shared, you told me that somehow the husband was okay with that. So they made it work between them, right? Or what, well, what? He, well, he didn't know. He didn't ah. know. He she's sharing this with me, Love and it. she's sharing this with me. But he didn't know that she was doing that. She was she was because she was a breadwinner because she earned a high income. She would travel, so Got she it. would meet up with partners while she's on travel. Well, that goes into a different area in terms of you know, do you want to be in integrity with or I don't even want to say she was out of integrity because it's mm -hmm. all subjective, right? Maybe she thought that it was the best thing to do for her husband, not to uh, hurt him or for her kids. And honestly, I'm not judging anyone because we all make the best possible choices that we can at the moment we make them. Otherwise, we make different choices. Right. So the fact is that she probably intuitively tried to or figured out something that would work for her. Uh, the, the advantage of doing it in a more explicit way is that you can not only feel it, but you can also explain it to yourself, to others, and then you can be much more deliberate and intentional in the choices that you make. Uh, you actually, actually asked me earlier whether you should show what's important to you to your spouse, and the answer is it depends, you know, whether your spouse is open to communicating or not, but my recommendation is if you believe that your spouse is uh, open enough to being willing to communicate, or even if you want to explain to him that you have made a decision to divorce him, but not because he's a bad person, simply because you're not a good fit. And I use this analogy to say, imagine if you buy a beautiful pair of shoes and you have your size is eight and you buy a seven and a half. This is more like you know, women's size. Well, maybe you have a beautiful pair of shoes, but after a while, they hurt a lot. Now, is it because the shoe is a bad shoe? Oh. <laughs> It's just one half size too small. Is it because your foot is a bad foot? No, it's just your foot. It's just not a good fit between the foot and the shoe. And when you start considering things this way, it also puts everything in the communication in a non-judgmental context and in a much more a matter of fact in terms of, you know, those are the things that are important to me. You know, if there are enough that you believe that your husband or spouse could work on them, then you can communicate specifically on those. And if not, then you can explain and say, you know what, this is not working for me. And probably you won't be fully fulfilled either because I'm not fully fulfilled. And I also want to say, even though I work predominantly with women, everything that I share here is applicable to men. 
it's applicable to men evaluating or trying to better understand themselves and their relationship. And this process can also be applied to any sort of complex where there's a lot of variables, high stakes decision, buying a house, quitting your job or deciding which job to, 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 to accept. Anything that has a lot of variables and that has a high cost of failure, you can apply the same logic of gathering all the pieces of the puzzle, becoming very, very clear on what they are, ranking them from most important to least important, distinguishing between what's essential versus um, optional, and then really understanding how each option fulfills or not those things. Does that make sense, Marcus? Yeah, absolutely, it does. Okay. What is what is a what's a number one? What's a common thing throughout all your clients that you've seen, the women that you've worked with? What's a consistent number one must have this thing by women? Must That's must he be rich? Question. Must he be uh, a sexual prowess in the bed? What What's the number one common thing you you've seen? I love this question, and here's why: because there's a very clear answer. There is no clear number one. It is completely subjective. <laughs> It varies. Every single person has a different number one. That's, you know, at least in my experience. There may be some things that, you know, there, there are these cliches like men are attracted to physical beauty. Women are attracted by success or, or riches. But the reality is that every single relationship is different and each person is different. So you have to get to know yourself. And in my experience, some for some people, it was that they were a great communicator for some others. I had a woman who says, yeah, I want him to be successful. But another one was, I want him to be trustworthy. So it really depends. There is no absolute answer. And this is why this process is so important. And it starts with getting to know yourself. It's because there is no right. There is no wrong. It is what it is. And you need to understand what is important to you so that you can make decisions that will work for you, not for what people say you should feel or shouldn't feel. There's no right, there's no wrong. And uh, you know, I'm passionate about this, but I always tell my clients, you know, you are who you are, what is important to you is what is important to you. And it would not make sense for people to, to tell you, well, you should really make an effort and, and you know, try to forget about this. No, you know, what is the kind of food that you like? What's the dish that you love eating, Marcus? I love uh, goat soup or goat, goat um, lamb. You know. Goat lamb. Okay. Yeah. Imagine somebody say, hey, Marcus, no, 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 no. Goat lamb, that's not good. You should not like goat lamb. Stop liking goat lamb. You look at them and say, that's ridiculous. <laughs> if I like it, I like it, right? right? So what you feel is what you feel. Now, can you make compromises? Yes. And you are much better off making compromises on the things that you know are optional to you, not essential, because otherwise you will be miserable long term. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. So I have still one very important piece to, to, to share with you because you started with it. You said, we need to override the survival mechanism of the brain, right? This reptilian yep. brain. Because one thing is to have certainty, which I explained how to achieve that certainty through the process. But once you have that certainty on a logical level, you need to communicate it to your primal brain so that all parts of your brain are aligned. Because I've lost count of the number of women who tell me, you know, my therapist tells me that I should be divorcing, but my marriage counselor tells me I should be divorcing, but. And it doesn't work for two reasons. Number one, it doesn't matter what other people think. What matters is what you think. But number two, even if they may agree logically, intellectually, their primal brain and their emotional brain have not gotten on board yet. So... How do you communicate with those parts of your brain? Now, let me give you a little bit of statistics because you will know there's a very powerful conclusion that usually it blew my mind when I realized it and it has a huge impact and implication in terms of how to communicate with the other parts of your brain. So the old brain, the primal brain, the one at the very bottom, like the first scoop of ice cream, was formed 500 million years ago. Excuse me. <coughs> Your emotional brain was formed about 200 million years ago. And then the last part, the last scoop of ice cream, the last layer, it's your rational brain. It was formed two to three million years ago. And the rational part of your brain is in charge of, log of logic, of reasoning, and most of all, of language. That means, Marcus, that your primal brain and your emotional brain 
were formed before we developed language. Mm. Listen to this. That means that your old brain and your emotional brain do not understand words. That's crazy. Let me repeat it. Your emotional brain and your primal brain do not understand words. And let me ask you this. What do all the traditional solutions have in common, whether it's talk therapy, marriage counseling, talking to, uh, to friends, talking to lawyer? What do all these traditional solutions that people seek, what do they have in common? They tell me to talk to the other person. Yeah, they use words, they use language, but yep. you can use as much language as, as, as much language as you want. Those part of your brain don't get it. So if words don't work, then how do you communicate with those parts of your brain? And rather than me giving you the answer, I'm going to lead you through a thought experiment, Marcus. So let me ask you this, Marcus. Do you have children? I do not. Okay. Uh, are you in a relationship with someone? I am. Okay. So uh, can you get back on screen with me? I'd like to see you when I, when I do sure. so, so much. So I would assume that if this person, if, if this person that you're in a relationship with were to cheat on you, you would be upset. Is that a fair statement? That's correct. Okay. So I'm going to give you that same piece of information that this person is cheating on you in four different ways. And I want you to kind of assess how you feel emotionally about it. So modality or, or scenario number one, a person comes and tells you, hey, Marcus, that person is cheating on you, but you don't know what the other person with whom they're cheating with looks like. You would feel upset, correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. Scenario number two. Someone comes and tells you the person you're with, your partner, is cheating on you, but this time you know what the other person who they're cheating with looks like. How upset would you be? Less upset, just as upset, or a bit more upset? More upset. More upset. Scenario number three, a person comes and they don't tell you anything. They show you pictures of your partner being intimate with another person. How upset are you? Less, equal, or more? More. Okay. Last scenario. You come home, you open the door, and you see your partner being intimate with the other person in your living room. How upset are you? Highly. Just, I'm Highly blacking out. Okay. And yet, isn't that interesting? Because it's the exact same piece of information. Your partner is cheating on you. Man. What's the difference between the four scenarios? How I found out. Yes. And what specifically about how you found out made it more powerful emotionally? How, how I absorbed the information versus someone telling me versus me seeing it with my eyes. Yes. The scenario number one, you just heard about it. You didn't know what the other person looked like. Scenario number two, you heard about it, but you knew what the other person looked like. So you would be able to better imagine. It was easier for you to imagine, to visualize it. Scenario number three, they show you pictures. Number four, you see it live. So that means that your primal and emotional brain, they understand what they see. You feel it when you see it. Does that make sense? It does. Have you ever watched a movie where you already know the ending and you know logically that it is a happy ending? And yet, if it's, you know, I'm going to give you a, both a, a men's movie and a women's movie. If you watch Rocky Balboa, you know he's going to win. And yet, when you see him being pummeled by Ivan Drago and bleeding and so on, you feel the struggle. You feel anxious. You feel all the negative emotions, right? right? Why? Because even though logically you know it's going to be a happy ending, what your brain, what your primal brain, emotional brain see is that the poor Rocky is being pummeled. What they see is what you feel. A movie for women is The Notebook. When Ali and Noah, you know they're going to get together in the end, but they have struggles. And when you watch the movie, you feel those negative emotions. It's only when you see the happy ending that you feel the happy ending. Does that make sense? It does. So that solves the mystery of why, you know, do we feel, why do we know logically one thing, but we feel otherwise? It's because those parts of the brain need a different language. Now, why have I gone into explaining this? It's not just a piece of trivia, but it is a fundamental way. And this is why the process, the decoding grid that I have developed is so revolutionary because it takes the clarity that you have on a logical level 
to communicate it in a very powerful visual way to your brain. So once you have the understanding of all the things that are important to you, in which order, what's essential, what's is optional, we create a visual map of your values with contrast so that visually you immediately see, oh, this zone is the essential area zone. Those are the things that are essential to me. This zone is the optional uh, area zone. And then we assess how each value is fulfilled or not in your relationship using color coding. Red means it's not fulfilled. Blue means it's acceptably fulfilled. Green means it's fulfilled. And once you do that, all of a sudden you have a complete picture where you consider all the relevant variables where you can instantly assess the state of health of a relationship. Is my essentials area in the red zone or in the blue zone or in the green zone? At a glance, you can immediately have a visceral understanding of what your relationship is. And then you can also then go and apply the logic and say, okay, what are the reds? Are those red things that I can change or not? But this is where your head is aligned with your heart, is aligned with your gut. Does that make sense? It does. So keep I have developed. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. No, you're keeping everything aligned. Yeah, keeping everything aligned. And this is where it makes sense. This is where you can assess your relationship all at once, considering all the 20 to 30 variables. And I had this client, her name was Kim. She had been married for 25 years. And kind of since the beginning, she had been doubting the relationship. But, you know, life goes by. They had, they, they had a son. And then for the previous three years before she came to, to get my help, she had been struggling with the decision to divorce or not because she had met another man and she had an affair. Again, I did not judge. She was making the best possible choices that she was able to make at that time. But she was in an impossible situation because she didn't know what to do. She wasn't sure whether this other man was a truly a good fit or whether it was just in contrast because she was not happy with her husband. Her son, who was a grown-up son, actually knew about the affair and he wanted his mom to be happy, but he couldn't lie to his dad anymore. So he finally came to her and says, Mom, you need to make a decision. I cannot do this anymore. But she was completely lost. She was confused because she knew that whatever decision she would make, she would hurt people. On the other side, you know, the man that she had met had left her wife and was waiting for her to leave her husband. But she had her husband and she was still hoping at this part of her that she could fix her relationship and not have to break up the family. So she was completely lost, completely terrified. Her life was in shambles. And... When I took her through the decoding, decoding grid process and I took her to gather all the pieces of the puzzle, understand what's essential, what's optional, and then first assess the relationship with her husband on its own merits, regardless of the relationship with the other man, what she saw is that out of 20 th 26 things that were important to her, 14 were essential. But out of the 14 nine were not fulfilled. It was pretty much all in red, and most of them were in the top values. And that's when it dawned on her, like, oh, my goodness, now I know why I have doubted this relationship from the start. Now I know why I've been unhappy. And now I have the certainty that I cannot make it work long term. But the reason I'm bringing up this uh, case study is because the next question is, okay, if she had certainty that her relationship with her husband didn't work, what about the other man? Was he just a kind of, you know, nice to have, but not an ideal fit? Or was he truly a good fit? And when we assess the other man, both in her essentials versus optional areas, it was all green. Like almost all of them were green. And you could think, well, maybe this was wishful thinking, but it wasn't because I had guided her to understand what was important to her in her relationship previously and to define every single value in a way that was completely detached from her husband and from this other man. Mm -hmm. And when we put those two relationship assessments side by side, one was completely red, almost, and the other one was completely green. And it just was like a slap in her face, like, wow, now that's obvious. Yes, right. I get it. I'm not happy with my husband. I'll never be able to be happy. And this other person is actually a great fit. And it sounds so obvious when you see it, but she was lost in her emotions because she didn't have her head aligned with her gut. She didn't have her decoding grid to not only know it even logically, but also emotionally and understand it. Does that make sense? It does. It puts it in plain language. Yeah, absolutely. Does. Plain language and great images because that's yeah. what 
parts of your brain want, right? But you, yeah, it wants the imagery. It wants the imagery because it doesn't understand the words. And her saying it, her son saying it, is not going to make the difference. It, That's she right. has to visually talk to her her old brain, the That's primal right. brain. That's, that's right. What, that's what the decoding does. And it also aligns your head with your heart, with your gut, meaning that not only you know what to do at a visceral level and an emotional one, but you also have the logic in your head. You can explain why you made this decision. You can explain exactly this value that's really my top one value is not being fulfilled. So it's really this beautiful harmony between what you feel and what you know and what you can express. And that's why when women, that are, the, the people that I work with, when they see it, they have this incredible shift and peace of mind because finally they know, finally they feel it deep in their bones what the right decision is. Whether it's to leave the relationship or to realize that it has potential to be saved and to know what to focus on. But at least they know there's no doubt anymore and they can proceed forward with absolute certainty and confidence. Absolutely. <laughs> Stone the show. Dr. Fink, Mr. Fink, thank you for this. This is insightful. This is impactful and it gives me insight into things that, you know, about the brain and how we function as human beings and how we can do better. We just need the right tools to figure it out. And you have the tools. So how can people connect with you? How can people learn from you? How can people get with you and, and, and learn from the master. <laughs> Thank you so much. So if people want to get absolute clarity, they can go to my website, which is getabsoluteclarity.com, all three words together, with .com at the end. And there they will be able to get my book, Divorce Decision Decoded, where I spill all the beans. And they will also be able to find out how I can work with my clients and how I can work with them one-on-one, -on -one, because this is one of the most important decisions they will make in their lives and you want to make sure you get it right from the get-go rather than trying to do it with trial and error because you don't have that benefit but really you know i wrote the book because i stumbled upon something that i considered really revolutionary i want to share it with the world so thank you so much marcus for having me for giving me the opportunity to talk about it and and to make people aware that there is a better way you don't have to suffer you don't have to be stuck in pain and misery and indecision there is a way out you can have hope and you can have clarity and certainty so get absolute clarity.com Absolutely. GetAbsoluteClarity.com. That's GetAbsoluteClarity.com. G-E-T-A-B-S-O-L-U-T-E Clarity.com. <laughs> Spell it out. I got to speak. I, I, I guess it's a habit to break. I, I guess it's a habit speaking to that, that words, using words, even though You've just proven that that's not the way to break through. But thank you, doctor. Thank but you for that. Useful. You need both, right? It's not one or the other. It's all of it, right? Words and images, that's the best communication. Yep. Bring it up on the screen. I put it up on the screen. So if you don't watch this podcast, we are on iHeartRadio, Apple, iTunes, Audible, Spotify, Ghana, Facebook, anywhere you get your podcast. Check us out and get absolute clarity. If you, if you, forgot nothing else get connected with me and i will get you to mr fink so you know you can add that tool this is a tool right this is yes. all tools to add to your tool belt so that you can make better decisions in your relationships in business mm -hmm. in 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 any of the ships right relationships <laughs> friendships right you need absolute clarity to make sure that this is the right relationship for you so super powerful super dope we got to let them go, y'all. We are out of time. We got to let this incredible man go. He has many more couples, many more women to help and engage with and save and potentially save or give them clarity on whether they need to stay or go in their marriage. So thank you, Mr. Fink. I want to say this to you publicly. Don't ever quit. Thank you for doing what you do. Thank you so much, Marcus. It was an absolute delight to be here on your show. You've been a wonderful guest not guest host i mean <laughs> just thanks for the opportunity for letting me spread the message absolutely absolutely spread away thank you all for tuning into the gentleman style podcast show i hope this message has been helpful i hope this has been insightful and helps you get absolute clarity <laughs> plug shameless plug take like we end every show take care of your friends take care of your family 
And always, always take care of business. This is Marcus, your favorite gentleman, and Mr. Mike Fink signing off. Love you guys. Bye, Marcus. Bye. Bye.